Is it possible that we just saw the Bitcoin low put in yet again three months after the previous low with many of the bears missing out on another opportunity? Let's do the massive update for the Wyckoff schematic. There is a lot of disagreement around which phase we are currently in within the Wyckoff schematic. One is extreme to the bull side, the other extreme to the bear side. So let's break it down using the precise tools for this measure. We've also got the four year cycle update and the trans. The trans going from the bear to the bull or are we in fact not transitioning at all? You know what to do, hit that like and subscribe button if you wanna be up to date with this series on the Wyckoff schematic and of course the four year cycle. This is your home of macro cycle analysis. You guys know what to do. You see all of the updates here. And the previous one we did for the Wyckoff schematic was just over two weeks ago as well. So you can follow along with it here on the channel to see how well we've been tracking the schematic itself. And if you wanna learn more about Wyckoff and trading, investing full time, link in the top of the video description for our TIA crypto. Our members are doing extremely well over there with their trading and investing. And they also get access to weekly live streams, crypto trading for cash flow, full on explanations and courses on that. Short term model portfolio, long term portfolio, along with many other features there. All right, let's dive into the Wyckoff schematic update, taking a brief look at the short term and then we'll dive into the Wyckoff. And I'm also going to show you a mega, mega target to the upside and also looking at the stock markets as well. To see if they're also following some sort of Wyckoff schematic uh, to the upside. Uh, and the fear and greed. We'll get to that in just a moment. So the short term, uh, where we left off last week was basically around here, looking for a close, a weekly close above 26K, around that 26.1. There were more targets to the upside for a longer term hold for the bulls, but at least in the very, very short term, we needed to get above 26,000 because that's our 50% level. Plus that level also lines us up relatively nicely with remaining above these key support levels. So basically where the market had started to hold a support and then break down, we've now recovered that. At least we're above that for the last few days. So the closing price and the weekly close as well. So a quick look at the weekly close shows that we are above 26K and above this shorter term 50%. But I wanna take it out to the weekly 50%, which is where we're getting rejected from right now. So that's at this little peak. And that peak is at 28,400. So you can see over the last couple of days, we've been rejected at that price. 26.6, that's the significant level in the short term that Bitcoin needs to get back above so that it can hold, consolidate, and then start to work its way higher through this trading range. I don't think it's going to happen super quick, but this is also very nice to see uh, happening quite quickly over the last three or so days to bounce out of the 15th, June 15th low. This was a time that uh, a lot of bears were saying everything is wrong, everything bullish is absolutely wrong, and we're gonna go back to lower and lower prices. Now, I don't want to hate on the bears because this is going to happen exactly the same in reverse when we get to peaks. It's going to be the bulls saying that the market has to go up further and it's going to go up further, but we're going to see the opposite. We're going to see lower swing tops and then further collapses to the downside. And they'll just say, you just wait, you just wait. This is a great time to buy the dip, buy the dip. Okay, so I don't want to have a go and polarize different views here, but what we're seeing on the chart, not my opinion, but what's actually going on in the chart is a reversal, a bigger move than what we've seen previously, a uh, support, at least in the short term, above these levels here that we want to see it consolidate to break higher again. And if we go to the macro, well, lower high, uh, you've got higher lows forming, higher lows forming, higher lows forming. And we still have some key areas to the downside for significant support to remain in a bullish structure as well. So short term, this is the one I'm keeping my eye on here, 26,600, and then we'll start to move the 50% a little higher to get to those more longer term targets, the 27 and a half, and ultimately our target here, $28,000 for, for consolidation for a higher upside. So that's the short term stuff so far as an update as we get further into our Wyckoff schematics. So speaking of the Wyckoff schematic, let's take off some of these lines here on the chart 
and then we can start with the schematic to see where we're up to right now. The main thing that we were focusing on in the last update was the phase. Which phase are we in? Phase D or phase E? Several months ago, uh, I had update this and I was looking at us being in a phase E because we broke out relatively well, stayed above the trading range, and we're looking for consolidation to push higher. Now, in the one most recently, about two, two and a half weeks ago, I looked at this as being potentially wrong phase E and being in phase D. Nonetheless, it's still in a bullish picture. These are both pretty significantly bullish structures to be in. Phase D, the reason why I was looking to change it from a phase E to phase D is that we've had a push to the upside and it looks like we are going through this stage here. The last points of supply, the, uh, the backup here where the market is basically just trying to pull as much supply out of the market before it before the price can be marked up again. So either way, whether it's a phase D or phase E, it's in a bullish state, it's in a bullish structure. And if it's in a phase D, it's actually got more opportunity now for anyone that missed out, anyone that missed out at 15K, 18K, even 19 and a half K where this low is, to be getting into Bitcoin in a reaccumulation area. So that's why I'm looking at this as being a bull market structure, a bull market support before the market goes on further. So I'm not just going to take, well, hopefully you just don't take my word for it. Let's just have a look at the Wyckoff schematic here itself. We've got two different schematics here. In this particular case, we've got schematic one and schematic two, but I want to focus on what does phase D and phase E mean. Phase D, if we're correct in our analysis, what should follow is a consistent dominance of demand over supply. So consistent dominance of demand over supply. So supply would push the market down if we had too much supply and demand is obviously going to be the thing that drives the market up. And we have had a reasonable amount of supply coming into the market, but the demand has continued to meet the market's supply and hold the price up above key support levels. That can still break down. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe we go back into a trading range and Overall, maybe this was actually a phase B because that's pretty much the difference here. Many are looking at this as being a phase B and others are looking at it being a phase D or phase E where the market's basically broken out. My stance is phase D. So the next thing on the, the list here is the evidence. This is evidence by a pattern of advances, signs of strength. So if we get advances in the price, that's evidence now of a sign of strength and how we see those uh, advances need to be on widening price spreads. We've got a price spread here, so from the low to the top. Then we have another price spread and I don't think we need to get a measure out, but most of you can see that that is wider than that. And now we have another price spread, which is almost equal to, we can measure that if we want to get some uh, accurate reading. There's about $9,000 or 55% to the upside. That's 11,500, 59%. So widening yet again. Okay. So, I mean, it meets the criteria right here during phase D. Oh, so we go the widening price spreads, increasing volume as well as reactions. So last points of supply or on smaller spreads and diminishing volume. All right, so there's a lot in there. Let's just bring the volume up. That's basically what is being talked about here. So when we look at the, the volume, that's the upside. We want to see increased volume when the market's going up. We want to see increased volume when the market's going up. Well, there's increased volume compare, compared to what we just previously saw. Same sort of deal here. Now we're getting diminishing volume on diminishing spreads. Diminishing volume, diminishing spreads. It's exactly what it says right here. Diminishing volumes on smaller spreads. So during phase D, the price will move at least to the top of the trading range. So it says at least to the top. Maybe this was the trading range here. I mean, that's what I've covered multiple times and we've moved above it and then coming back to test the top of that. Others are calling this the top of the trading range. Absolutely, maybe fine. I'm not calling it the top of the trading range. Either way, we're still within the rules here. So at least to the top of the trading range. Last point of supply in this phase are generally excellent places to initiate or add to profitable positions. Last points of supply, I think it's actually called last points of support, essentially supply. If there's no more supply, well, then we're going to continue up from that point. There's this increased demand. So last points of support, excellent places to initiate or add to long positions. Not my words, 
This is what is written down for the Wyckoff schematic here. If in fact you believe this is an accumulation schematic and you believe we're in phase D. Others believe we're in phase B, which means that they are now waiting and waiting and waiting for lower prices, which may never come. This may have been the lowest price, 24,700, 24,800, depending on which exchange you're on. Okay, so if that's the case, then these are the best places to be adding to our longer term positions because we have a view of this market going up 50K, 70K, 100K, whatever you think it's going to take. Maybe you think it's going to 160, like some of our crazy analysts over here believe that this market is going to go to 165 by June or July. That's definitely not me, definitely not my view. I think we still have a lot of time, which is why I'm also adding in the four-year cycle update here. So I think we've met all of these conditions. We have the phase D conditions being met, which means we could then move on to phase E eventually whenever this trading range breaks out. But what we typically see is a reaccumulation zone here. So in phase E, the stock leaves the trading range, demand is in full control, the markup is obvious to everyone, which is why I think maybe we're still in phase D because this markup isn't obvious to everyone. We still have a lot of bears thinking that the market is going to fall. I'm sure the comments will come through. It's going to go below 20K, 15K, whatever. Okay. So newer, higher level trading ranges comprise both profit taking and acquisition of additional shares, or in this case, Bitcoin, uh, which is the reaccumulation. So this is the main point to note here higher level trading ranges. That's what TR is. So this could, in fact, be the phase E. That's why there's a, a discrepancy here between phase D or phase E, which at the end, the end of the day doesn't really matter because we're both getting in, we'll both believe that it's a bull market and that it's good times to buy in, but this would be a higher trading range. So you're going to have some sell-offs because of the profit taking from traders and investors who bought lower, making 100%, maybe they made 70%. That's where the current market sits from the low to the current price. There's your 70.2%. So some are going to be taking profits. That's a pretty reasonable move to the upside because maybe you think the price is going to chill out here for some time. Maybe you get a slightly lower entry. That's the reason for that happening, comprising of both, pro comprising of both profit taking and acquisition of additional Bitcoin in this case, reaccumulation zone. So that's the trading ranges. Uh, they're sometimes called stepping stones on the way to even higher prices. So it looks like we're still within these zones here. Let me know in the comment section, for whatever reason you think the market is still in a phase B, and this is going to then come back down and test these lower prices as what happens in phase B in Wyckoff uh, schematic one or in, in uh, phase two or schematic two, sorry, you might get that higher low in phase C of the Wyckoff schematic number two. All right, so that's the update of the Wyckoff schematic so far. If we start to head up a little bit higher here, well, phase E is probably going to be implemented and we get rejected at whatever the next resistance level is, form another trading range, so on and so forth, like what happened in 2016. A pretty, uh, pretty nice ranges here as the market broke out. You got that pump up, it reaccumulated and then broke out again. That's a clear example of stepping stones in the market. You can even see them happen on shorter term timeframes as it breaks out, reaccumulates again. Remember, this is on a weekly chart. So if you're looking at it on a daily, you'll be able to see that even clearer. There's just one, two, three, four, five weeks before it broke out. You get another two weeks, breaks out, comes back and tests. Another two to two and a half weeks, breaks out, comes back. So it just keeps happening over and over and over again to the upside until we finally bust from that top action there. Speaking of busting now, so we got the Wyckoff done, looking at the four year cycle. Now, I wanna give you an idea of where this cycle might end, where the cycle might actually break out of the all time, well, previous all time high into a new all time high. So some pretty big numbers here to keep in mind. Therefore, hit that like and subscribe button. Don't go anywhere on the channel. Uh, follow the series, because this is gonna help in that longer term view especially with any of this downside action that gets really fearful. I mean, when you zoom out, that looks like absolute nothingness. Yet, you guys know, if you were here for the last four days, two weeks, whatever, this has been, this right here has been absolutely wild. A few percent down, a few percent up. It's as if the entire show is over. But then you zoom out and you go, that is absolute nothing. Even if I take it off log, it's still nothing in the grand scheme of things with 
with what is possible to happen if we go to six figures, if we go beyond the six figures, like it's just, it's going to be absolutely nothing. Okay. So getting back to the time frames here, well, we've got a thousand or so days to the upside. Basically, I'm looking at a thousand to 1200 days from the cycle low to the all time high. It happened yet again on the previous cycle. So we've got this one here. There's your 1,000, 1,100 days from the cycle low to the peak. And again, this is where the market was looking to low. This is new data that's come in, but uh, this is typically where we measure the cycle low from. So 1,100 days. Nonetheless, even if this was incorrect and it was longer in that case, either way, the move to the downside also works out in a pretty good fashion. Basically, the timing is dead on there. 410 days for 11 days, 363. So basically another year and again, 376. So if we were to go to the most extreme, which is 410, that would take BTC out. So the low would have happened around there. So basically the end of December, the early part of January. So we're set, well, we're now six months away from that point. So if we were to go to a new low, this would be the lowest or the longest bear market that Bitcoin's ever faced. And of course, some of those reasons would be, well, we're in a looming recession. Markets are going to collapse further. There's a lot of things going wrong in the economy. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. Logically, the market should be collapsing when you think about all of the, the wrongness, and all of the, the bad that's going on and the things that just don't make sense when it comes to the uh, the economy but we have to remember we're not trading the economy we are trading the markets we're trading the data we're trading the little ups and downs on the chart and the ups and downs are telling us this is an uptrend so if we want to deny that that's a different style of losing money but if we want to go along with it then well we'd be making money because the market is going up so keep in mind what your time frame is and what it is that you're actually trading so four year cycle still seems well, still, it's definitely on track at this stage. There's been no breakdowns and the market isn't doing anything different to what it's done in the past. So that's what we're looking for. We're just looking for lows to lows. So the overall time frame here from the low to the low, about 1400 days. And we can mark it back to the previous one, also about 1400 days. And of course, this one here is going to be slightly longer, about 15 or 1600 days. There you go, 15. So if we have that in mind, and we know that the market goes from the low to the top, roughly a thousand days, if in fact this is a strong bull, so there are a couple of disclaimers, because this could go to a new high quicker than the thousand, but that is going to be a weak market structure. If you don't understand that, just think about when a market rises very, very quickly, it typically has to come down for a lot longer, because if it goes up fast, it needs some time to chill out, get some support, build the stepping stones before it can move again. And if it is unable to build those stepping stones, it will break down. That's just as simple as it is. In this case, we ran up really quick, built one stepping stone or very big stepping stone, and we attempt it again. The beauty is that it fell right within the four year cycle theory here, but around that thousand days to the upside, and then tried another stepping stone to go on longer, but it just didn't have the time left in it. The bull market was over, and you can see that it collapsed from that point. So that's why we're looking at this as being a refresh, which means we need to have a look at the time frames here. You can see it there, a thousand days. Where does that take us? Well, to the next peak, roughly the second half of 2025. So still on track for a uh, top in the market, not a new all time high, but a top in this cycle, roughly the second half, so that's a six month window here of 2025. What about for a new all-time high price? This is probably the exciting part. Well, it's taken about a thousand days from the top in the previous cycle to then touch a new all-time high. So that was about a thousand days, 1100 days. In the cycle prior to that, the top to a new test of an all-time high, roughly around 1100 days. If you want to take it to this March period in 2017, the fear at this point where the market dropped from there was basically China banning Bitcoin. I'm sure you've heard that before, but that was what the fear was at that time. That's basically when I got into the market. Uh, it's about 1,200 days. So we can look at anything from about 1,000 to 1,200 days for 
Bitcoin to reach a new all-time high. I'm not saying that that's the top of the cycle, so keep that very clear. Not the top, but a new all-time high. In fact, it may be a top. I should add that. But what all I'm saying here is that is the time frame to a potential new all-time high. And if that is the top of the market, so be it. That's what it is there. But I think we possibly have a little further to go from that point. And if we look at our thousand days from the all-time high, stretch this out, this is going to take us to approximately August of 2024. So we can say the second half of 2024 could potentially get us to a new all-time high. If it happens earlier, we'll track it. No worries. We've got the data there that we can start to identify whether it's going to happen sooner. Nonetheless, we're trying to figure this out a long way from the actual point. It's over one year from today being in June. And so if we look at that as a gauge, second half, if it's August 2024, what is that? Third quarter of 2024. Okay, so that's one key area to keep in mind. From the bottom to the all-time high now, roughly speaking, second half of 2025. So there's going to be that window when the market breaks above the all-time high. Maybe it goes for about 12 months. No one honestly knows. We just got some rough gauges here in terms of time frames. So that's all I want to keep in mind here as we sift through the Wyckoff schematic update, the four-year cycle update as well. Of course, there's going to be plenty more on the channel. Make sure you do subscribe. And if you want to learn more about the Wyckoff schematic, go and check out the Investor Accelerator. This one is a very succinct course to teach you how to use it in your trading as well. So that link is in the top of the video description, exclusive to TIA Premium. All right, so let's have a quick look at the Wyckoff schematic with the stock markets. Before I go to these ballistic, huge targets of $228,000, and then a quick look at the Fear and Greed Index as well. So we have an understanding of the schematic. We have tests, we have selling climaxes, we have last points of supply, and then we have the breakout of the trading range. So this is what I previously had on the chart for the S&P 500. You guys might remember seeing this trans transitional period. And then through this period and this period, I was cautiously confident of the bull market going to break out to new all-time highs. So cautiously confident. I mean, talking amongst myself, my brother, my friends, I was confident that this is not going lower, but publicly, I say cautiously confident because I don't want to piss the bears off too much because maybe some of them will start to learn something within that period and they might get into the market as it's going up as well. Maybe they'll flip earlier. But if I give you that polarization, that obviously pushes a lot of people away and I don't want people to miss out on the runs that are potentially happening. So hopefully that makes sense when it comes to the psychology, uh, especially when you don't agree with someone's message. And so far, this thing has gone absolutely nuts. So I'll get rid of that now. Transitional period, that's what we're calling this here, going from our June low to October low, December low, March low. And then we even have these little April and May lows. The market has absolutely blasted through. So we're out of the transitional period. Maybe we come back and test some of these higher prices. Maybe we just hold out at these um, even higher prices to consolidate because this market has been going up very strong for the last several weeks. No, I don't think we'll get a new low. No, I don't think these lows will come back and get broken out, broken down now, 3,800 points. But uh, anything above that, take your guess for this point in time. So transitional period, we're out of that. We've gone from a bear to a bull, technically speaking, you can keep calling it a bear if you'd like. That's your call. Nonetheless, we're now at the rejection trap here. And looking at the Wyckoff schematic, well, it looks like we've put in our low, our test. We've started to accumulate at higher prices. We've got this little bit of a phase D type structure happening here at the top of the trading range right there. And now we've broken out potentially into a phase E. How does it look on the NASDAQ? So everything that I just said there, applies to the NASDAQ as well, talking about these lows holding in. Uh, we basically got the tests, the bottom, the next test, the higher low. We got the banking crisis low, higher low. We got the move to the upside, potentially this phase D pattern forming at the top of the trading range here. And what do you know? Phase E blows the market away, closing above resistance, we want another couple of weeks closes up that uh, above those price ranges for now. But overall, this is well and truly into a bull market. 
that is just an uptrend. I, I can't argue it any other way because the chart is saying it's a bull market. The economy, things still seem pretty rough and they will continue to seem pretty rough, especially as we move up in the prices here. But if I'm trying to go long in a market and buy stocks low and sell them high, lows are always formed on pessimism. And you know yourself, we had a lot of pessimism in stocks, in crypto, Bitcoin, you name it, there was pessimism every single day throughout that low. That's just a typical sign of a bottom. So NASDAQ also looks like it's followed this same pattern as well out of that bottom into phase E. Nonetheless, we'll continue to follow up. So these crazy targets here for Bitcoin, I, although I'm bullish, I don't want to get swept up into the ridiculous moon boy bull case because eventually we're going to have to flip because we'll get some tops. But just looking at some of these patterns here, uh, the, nothing against any of these patterns. It's just the targets which are absolutely wild in terms of the time frames. Okay, just the time frame. So 160, 200, I don't care. But it's really just a bit of a, I think, warning in case you start to get swept up into a time frame of June, July this year, which is only a few weeks away, for this market to get up to 100K, 165K, 200K. Overall, I hope many of you have got your positions in the market. But don't get too swept up like this. Remember what happened in the previous cycle and the cycle before that and the cycle before that and before that. It's the same thing. You know, we get to these tops and everyone starts calling 100K. We get to these tops and at 20K, everyone's calling for 50K. It's, it's just a, a wild place to be because, I mean, that's what happens in bull markets. It's just a wild place. That's why I started earlier on. Be careful of the narratives that get thrown out there. And that's precisely what I put together in a tweet. So... Links are in the video description for my Twitter and Instagram. This is a very long tweet, but it just gives you the uh, understanding of what we'll probably see next. And I think if you can prepare for what we'll see next in the media and high profile analysts that you see on, I don't know, Twitter or YouTube or whatever, and if you can prepare for how they'll start to talk, you will be miles ahead of everyone else. Because this is what I've noticed over 15 years of my own trading and investing. Everyone seems to take the same sort of approach. And you wonder why 90% of people lose money. Okay, so go and read this. This is just talking about six ways high profile analysts and financial media will begin to pivot on their bearish views. I'll give you one or two for now. They'll simply begin talking about the bull market more than the bear market. And Basically, they know that many investors don't remember history. Like you know yourself, people that were here in 2021 are probably left, those who bought the top, and they'll come back later. So they won't know what people have talked about for the last two years, and they'll come back and see what's going on two years later. So they'll simply forget that they were bearish at the bottom because most people just don't stick around, and they'll come back at the good times only. There's a few other ones there, something just to sit aside and go through uh, in your own time because there's a uh, that would be extremely helpful. That's all I'm going to say there. Otherwise, I'll keep rambling because I still want to get onto the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. So this looks like we are still on the reset path. This is obviously what we've been following for many months now. We were getting a little bit greedy here, hitting the 70 mark. And of course, when you hit 70, probably it's getting time for a bit of a, a pullback. We have been further in the past, just for a brief period, like in 2019, when we went on that run from 3,000 to 14,000. But that was an extreme case, right? Nonetheless, we have now hit 70. We were hovering around 60 and 70 for a little bit, and we've now broken down. My target was to hit 40 for the end of the reset. And it looks like we will have to settle with 41. So if I throw, get this a little bit closer, we got to 41 on the 15th, which in fact marked the low. So there's your 15th bar here. 14th was a massive scare. 15th, and now we've pushed away from that point. Let's see, I never want to say that anything is over, especially in the short term, but in terms of the macro, that's where I'm far, far more confident. The short term, nonetheless, we are holding up here. We've had a nice move away from that low. Beautiful two months down. Beautiful mid-month turning point yet again. This was the 14th. This was the 12th. This was the 15th. The market is turning nicely on those 30-day moves. Fear and greed looks like it's resetting now, hitting that 40 area. And what we could hope for, the best thing we can hope for is that this does not get too greedy. We don't want it to get into the greed. We want it to stay neutral or even just hover around here and start to just drop 
into that fear. Give us just a touch of fear underneath the 40 level and that would be a nice reset for the crypto fear and greed. Otherwise, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. This is also looking relatively good. And if we just track a trend line, well, maybe if we get a breakthrough and just hold above these levels, that's going to be a pretty good area for Bitcoin to continue to consolidate with. Because remember, we watched that uptrend work from the June low and then there was November at a higher low. So we knew that the fear was leading the market even though the price was a lower price. Great times to be here in the market, all looking relatively good for the next stage. That is your update. If you want any other details, links are in the video description. Also, the Wyckoff course is down there as well. Like and subscribe. Guys, I'll be back with a, another video for you. Hope you had a fantastic weekend and I'll see you at the next one. Until then, peace out.